A very, very good evening to all the girls and boys. Today, you and I can talk because India is free. Today, exchange of ideas like this can happen because India is free. We are celebrating 75 years of India's independence and let's hear it for our own country. <laughs> My name is Apra Kuchil. And today, I am here to be talking on the topic through the looking glass. What do we mean by through the looking glass? Many of you have heard this term if you are an avid reader, but many of you may not have heard that term. It's fine. Through the looking glass is a metaphor. It means looking at a traditional problem with a different perspective. It means creatively looking for a solution for a problem that has been existing. And that definitely requires a willful transformation of your own self. It definitely requires getting out of a comfort zone. And it definitely requires unity of your body, heart and mind. Why are we talking about this? Because we all have dreamt about our own worlds. And when it is through the looking glass, the world that comes out is a world of your dreams. It may not be a world as usual as it looks, but definitely it's closer to your heart. How did this line play a very important role for me? In grade eight standard, I was a part of a declamation competition and the topic was contentment is mere stagnation. I spent days and days in the library at that point of time, we did not have Google. I spent days and days together looking for research material. I did pretty well at that. And this line stayed with me. And this line till date has been the existing line of my life. Next, till about grade 12, I was doing whatever a normal girl in a girl's school should be doing, studying. I was also fighting the attack of being fat, being nerdy. I used to wear these round glasses and also I had a tag of being a question mark. I used to run behind my teachers after the classes got over, because I think I was looking for something or the other. I was looking for some solution. I was looking for a different perspective. And it was through the looking glass, because I was not satisfied with one answer, because I had the urge to learn more and more. The next 12 years, I again did what a girl of my age should be doing. I got married, I had children. I was taking care of all the responsibilities. It's not wrong to take care of responsibilities. You're responsible towards your parents, you're responsible towards your partner, your family. But at that point of time also, I had a very different mindset. At that point of time, when girls of my age, when ladies of my age were bickering about their in-laws, complaining about the family issues or you know, what has been the mother-in-law, daughter-in-law story, or the children problems. I had a problem-solving attitude. For me, gratitude was my attitude. At that point of time, I ventured into radio, I ventured into television. I tried my hands at being a social entrepreneur. Since then, I tried my hand at business. I got a chance to represent my country at a group study exchange, went to UK for six weeks, left my one and a half year old son, thanks to my supportive husband, who's always been a part of this journey. Thanks to my supportive family, my in-laws, because I had the gratitude. And when you have the gratitude, 
you see things changing and turning around you. In 2014, I was very fortunate to be heading the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industries, the ladies organization, the Jaipur chapter. I was heading a consortium of approximately 600 women. I was young myself. I thought to myself, these are all women leaders. I was rubbing shoulders with them. These are women who play a very important role in policy making. And I am the head of this organization. What should I be doing differently to achieve the maximum? I tried to bring about a renaissance of ideas. I organized 50 events in 52 weeks. That was the maximum anybody could have ever done. I gave them ideas and more ideas and more ideas till the time they came out of their own comfort zone. I pushed them, I encouraged them, I inspired them because they were all looking for that kind of a little push from somebody. Once my tenure was over, many of them came to me and they said, we'd never even imagined that we could be doing this. That is how thinking differently brings to you. In 2015, I was very fortunate to be a part of the US State Department, the Fortune Mentoring Program. I had these very amazing mentors. These mentors were stalwarts. They were business women, they were business leaders, they were caregivers, they were again sitting at the decision making, they were policy formulators. I learned so much from them. I spent hours and hours shadowing them. My first mentor was Karen Hughes. She was the Under Secretary of the US Public Policy. She was also somebody very close to President George Bush. Her words still resonate with me. She said, you talk to a woman or you teach to a woman about nutrition and the next day you will be seeing that she'll be taking care of her family in that manner. You give her a loan, the next day she will be employing and engaging her friends and neighbors to start a business. These words stayed with me. And I thought to myself, if they can do it, why can't I? Representation goes a long way, my dear friends. Also, the leadership styles which I saw in these women actually inspired me to think that anything could be achieved. My second mentor was Ann Davison. She was heading the crisis practice at Burson Marsteller at that point of time. I learned crisis management under a pandemic. Pandemic? At that point of time? I thought to myself, what is a pandemic? At that point of time, she had clients who were dealing with a pandemic called Ebola. I owe so much to them because at that point of time, when I was a part of the cohort of these powerful women, I realized problems of women, rather problems of human being across the globe is the same. It is just how creatively we deal with that problem, we get the solution, and there lies the inspiration. I came back and I founded my own not-for-profit, We Care. Why did I even have to form it? Why couldn't have I work like this? Because my mentors taught me, whatever you do, give it a structured framework. It's very important. Before you want people to take you seriously, you should be taking yourself seriously. I formed We Care. We Care is an initiative to promote women, youth, art, and culture. We organize various women empowerment programs. We organize a lot of youth connect exercises. And what we have been doing at We Care is we've been asking youth to connect to their own selves because it's extremely important to connect with your own self. We work to promote art and culture. We work to promote languages. Language is an index of culture. Today, you and I can understand each other because we speak the common language. If I may be speaking another language, you would have not even understood what I'm saying. So it's extremely important to preserve languages for our future generations. 
Imagine if you ever go to any place, you land at an airport. What is the first thing you see? You see the culture of that country. If any friend of yours comes to your house, what is the first thing you show to that person? It is your own culture. It is so very important to preserve art and culture for our future generations. My message to you, all you young people here, when you're at a global platform, imagine yourself or treat yourself as a global citizen. Behave like a global citizen. At the same time, never forget your own roots that have led you to reach there. Because if you cannot promote and work for preserving your art and culture, there is nothing you can do. No problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. To solve any kind of problem, it is very important to just rise up a bit. To solve any kind of problem, it is very important that you take a step backwards and see that problem. There is nothing like the word impossible. It is I am possible. And the best way to do something impossible is to believe that it is possible. These were also the lines of Alice's father in Alice Through the Looking Glass. It's very important that we bring in such practices at our business places. And many aspiring entrepreneurs who are sitting here, I would really, really urge you all to believe that everything is possible. One quality of a leader that is so important in any part of the world you are in, and that is empathy. One very important quality for any kind of team dynamics is trust. Do not think that arguments are roadblocks. Rather, constructive arguments, constructive discussions lead to a better perspective. It leads to a better answer. These were things which I practiced in my day-to-day -day life. These were the things when I went to speak to people, I tried to tell them, it is so very important to celebrate the differences we have. It is so very important to appreciate the differences we had. If we all were alike, we couldn't have made anything possible. Mentoring is a very important part of my life. I owe a lot to mentoring. I owe a lot to paying it forward. I was very fortunate, as I said, to these mentors who've invested a lot of time in me. Mentoring is not taken very seriously in our communities. Mentoring is a two-way street. It helps the mentees to realize their own dreams. At the same time, it helps the mentors to become experts. It's very, very important that you believe in the idea of your mentees. How many of you have ever mentored? I urge all of you sitting here, all you capable people, at least mentor one person in your life. And that you will see the change. Even for young people, you youngsters sitting here, it's extremely important to stand up and ask for help. Any kind of help that could be. To ask that I need some support. Do not shy away from asking for help. It's okay if you make mistakes. It's okay if you just fall down, stand up and start to walk again. Because that is the true power of a human being. Have you heard of the egg and the omelet story? You need to break an egg to make an omelet. Something, if has to shine, the other needs to diminish. It's so very important to get down of one mountain to climb another mountain. You cannot jump from mountain to mountain, can you? To all of you sitting here, 
let's give back to our societies let's pay it forward in that way i'm coming towards the end of my talk i'd like to ask you all when you switch on a radio how much time do you take to fix the frequency to tune the frequency i take very little time because somewhere or the other i have straight line of communication within my own self because i know what i want to do and that is what has kept me ahead of my learning curve having straight line and clear lines of communication with your own self from being into radio to television from being a mentee to a mentor from an entrepreneur to a social entrepreneur from a daughter to a mother i've enjoyed each and every domains of my life in each and every domains i've had the action oriented approach i may not be prepared for each and every role i may not be prepared for each and every situation but i have always learned to adapt and grow with each and every situation after each and every situation i have told myself i am stronger than before i have started to take myself seriously so many times earlier it used to happen i used to walk in any kind of organization or any kind of talk and they used to look at me and say where is ma'am and i used to turn them around and say i am the ma'am so do not think there is any less of you anywhere to conclude there is a beautiful saying which i firmly believe in and that has been my mantra all around and it is also through the looking glass it follows through the looking glass it is a famous quote by sheryl sandberg which says life is a jungle gym and not a ladder to reach at the top of a ladder there is only one way but to reach at the top of a jungle gym there are many ways thank you